Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Ponbarian. Uh, last time we looked at both characters, or both sets of characters, rather. So, all three of these guys. This time, I'm gonna look at the three areas. So, we've been in the Goblin Caves, we actually beat it more than once. A fetid lair hidden deep in the Rook Ridge, home to ghastly goblins and other sort of cruel creatures, slowly being corrupted by the Blight. So, the Blight is something we have seen a bit of. Uh, we also have the Golem Fortress, near the entrance of this ancient stronghold jeep in the Tattoo Range. That's probably a joke I don't get, now that I read it. Chess? Chaturaji is a chess-like game with four players. It was described by Al-Biruni in his book called India. Uh, it was a game of chance. The pieces to be moved were rolled by deciding... The places to be moved were de decided by rolling dice. It's a variant of chess. Interesting. Cool. So, Chatu range is just... I guess the Indian part with four kings, maybe? Oh, Chatu range is Chatu Raji. It's a pun. A pun, or play on words. Um, so these all obviously have completely different enemies. Night Golem, Capybara Golem, Spewer Golem. So, Golem Fortress. So... They're all golems. Or golem, if you prefer. Not crazy. Um, gotta remember that I'm not attacking and moving. I'm doing one or the other. Um, so obviously these are all robots, and then they have this going on. So, spark traits are things that these guys have. So, when you use cantrip, they spark. So, this guy spark aegises, so he's immune. This guy uh, has the same thing going on. And then this also, his death triggers sparking. So, I can kill, because I have to trigger at least one person's spark. So if I trigger his spark and then kill that guy, it doesn't count. It doesn't trigger it twice, so I don't need to worry about that. Cool. Um, so yeah, this is a really interesting one because obviously cantrip is really, really good. Spark Surge attacks after a cantrip. And then these guys... Yeah, hmm. And then they also have dodge, huh? Why don't we give this a shot? Stupid. That's what that was. That was stupid. Shit, right. I don't move and attack. I have one or the other. Um, ordinarily, I haven't been retrying things, but I only saw three floors, so... Let's take another swing, huh? Um, you... Do you have you have move and you gain immune? That's fine. Hmm. The problem is Yeah, it's hard it's hard to get a kill sometimes with these just because of how the character works. Um, hmm. You. You. Yeah. No armor. Who needs that? It only protects my life. So again, why bother? Just take the hit. And then, hmm. I'll grab this, and I'll grab one armor. Um, so I was thinking about how could this game improve? How could this game get better? Because obviously it's very, very simple. It's a chess builder, deck, uh, deck builder, chess based deck builder roguelike. That's the correct order. Um, you know, it's a thing where like, 
Okay, cool. Cool. Love to see it. Uh, <laughs> a lot of buzzwords in this. Okay. It is a game with a lot of buzzwords. Not to put it against anyone. It just is. Hmm. Shit. Right, duh. Everything has spark in here. Um, okay. Grab those, and we're good. I'm borrowing a term from civilization. In civilization, you can either build a wide or tall civ. Wide is you have a bunch of cities, and each city only has a few things in it. Tall is you have many cities. No, wait. Wide is you have a lot of cities dotted all across the land. But each one is weak. Yeah. So you're tall and flat. Okay. 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 So these now have three blight on them because he's just kept blighting it. So standing in there will be almost instant death because it'll also do damage. Standing here is instant death, no matter if he's there or not. Okay. That's what we're doing then. Cool. Um, yeah, a tall civilization has a very small amount of cities, so it's narrow, but each one has a whole bunch of stuff in it, so it's tall, you know? Hmm. So you do that. Right. Don't move and attack. Wait, duh, right. I don't move and attack. God, golly. Pardon me, everyone. Um, so wide is everything has at least one thing on it. That's a way to play it if you want to tall is you have like one card in here and it's got a bajillion things on it but the thing is because it's purely random which ones you get and which ones you don't yeah i don't don't give me those guys i don't want them thank you um because it's purely random which ones you get like You just, you can't rely on getting your one really good one that you really like. You can't rely on getting that one. So, arguably it's better to build uh, tall. Nope, to build wide. I It would help if I could get these in the right way around. Pardon me, I'm a little uh, hungry. I, uh, I fast, um, for those who don't know. This will armor me, so I can take this hit. Hmm. This will armor me, so I can take the hit again. And then I only take one damage. Uh, hmm. Cool. That was a smart play, I say to myself. Take that, I guess. Um, yeah, taking one damage is fine, but of course you want to never be taking damage. Maximize your potential there, you know? I was relying on getting uh, Rook there. It was a gamble, but I was able to take it.
if you have the chance to take out somebody who's immune, obviously that's good. So last time I promised that I would talk about the things that I could potentially want to see in um, for the future of this game. Obviously more crazy variations on chess for the player and enemies would be good. A whole new campaign would be something, but I was thinking, what if this game had the art style that it was like not advertised with, but the art style that it has in the art? I think that that would be funny. I think it'd be interesting. Um, hmm. I guess here. Hmm. Here to take less damage. Yeah. That's good. Do this. This is a little problematic here because I can't keep up with all of the guys that he keeps spawning. Of course, it's my own fault, but... Yeah, no. Okay. Damn it. I'll get you one of these days. Don't use the cantrip, just in case. All right, cool. Um... Like, this game is, like, loosely... I don't really want to call this game perfect, because, like, you know, it doesn't really have that much going on, but there's nothing wrong with it. Like, it loads properly, it works well, it has a, you know, good UI, it has a good, obvious method of, of explaining to the player how, you know, you should expect these things done. What are you... Hmm... Move here, take the hit on the armor. Good, good. Okay, cool. Love to see that. Hmm. This is two damage from Blight. This is... While I'm on the adjacent squares. That's unfortunate. Oh, it triggered twice, yeah, because of his... Okay. Take the armor. Take the armor again. While I'm on these squares. I'll just get as far away from him as I can, so I can't be on the adjacent squares. And then I can take the shot. Cool. Line him up and knock him down, I guess. Uh, hmm. Do I really want to have more cantrips? It's the only thing I have the ability to buy. I guess I'll take them. Just to have something to go in there with. Um, but yeah, this game's, like, basically done. Like, obviously they could put more stuff in with DLC. But there's no need to do that. Um, what if we did... So you attack... You move, you attack. Mm. Where should I be in order to avoid getting knocked? Here? Yeah, because then I can take one. Okay, and then I can take another one. And then where? Because now this is two. Should have seen that coming. Um, I guess I'll take you out. Because then that's only one again. Sure am glad that I have all these fucking cantrips. Oh, yeah, right. And because I'm not moving next to them, I'm not adjacent. I need to do this just to get out of here. And 
then that means I only take one damage. I think my goose is about cooked here, but I did, I was able to show off the entire thing this time, so I'll take it. Yeah, I wonder what I'll do. Yeah, whatever. Um, I was able to show off everything, so. So, now we have the Fell Shrine. This gruesome temple houses a portal of the Blight Void and spills all manner of ulcerous, technically spiky horrors from over there. Ulcerous is a good word. Um, so yeah, like, I think that you could remake this game in 3D and, like, Blight Imp, Demon Golem, so it has Spark Surge, so I can't cantrip with him. Uh, and another Void Imp. Uh... So, you may have seen Void Grasp. Um, moves hero in direction of the attack. So, it didn't trigger that time because I killed, but you saw it last round. Uh, I'll get some armor. That seems like a good, smart thing to do. For good boys to do. Um, void Grasp is weird, so... It's a little better on me than on anyone else. I'll take one to kill a little more efficiently. So I kill him and then he tugs me in that direction. See? So now I'm there. Um, and that can be a problem because I, in the same way that like you back somebody up into a wall and then they get killed, um, I can get pushed forward into a wall. Or pushed, yeah, pushed forward into a wall and be killed. Um, if it triggers twice and I get tugged in the same direction, then that's too bad for me. <laughs> um, I'll take, I'll just do the one damage. And then I'll move here just to... Only take one and do nothing here. So if I was doing that melee style, I would have to take that damage again. Um, I would have to take damage there because I had moved into range move here. Won't do damage. Um, it's a little complicated and I find myself often, often, often getting tripped up by it. Like, I really want to emphasize here that it kills me so bad. Um, and then naturally, everything in here does blight. So, you can survive a little longer if you bring a character who can uh, do blight stuff. Um, I think Mystic and, uh, what's their name? Uh, Knight Templar. Both of them can do things in order to stop you from taking blight damage. So here, I was fine with uh, getting yanked because I... Okay, so who's attacking me? All these guys are. I'll move away just to take no damage. And I have a spare anyway because of the cantrip, so that's fine. See, it's a very, very weird um, move of theirs. And their ability to just, like, jerk you around, literally. Uh, that can get you killed pretty good. My cat's having a bath on the floor over there. Uh, hmm. See, that could have been dangerous for me because while I'm on the adjacent squares, okay, so if I move here, I'll be good. Let's move here because I can avoid the damage and I'm just very far away from them. And then I can knight into... Well, take out both of them. Move. 
move here. Yeah. So, like, this, this game is fun. It's really good as well. And I would be interested to see, like, what they do with, like, a 3D version of this. Like, you could literally just make this game in 3D. Even if it had, like, a, you know, simplified graphic style, I would still really enjoy it. Um, I would make it myself if I knew how to model. Like, it's a really, really cool game and a really, really cool concept. It's so simple, too, because it's literally just... Like I said, it's a lot of buzzwords, but they're all good, you know? Deck-like, chess, rogue builder. Damn it. Chess, deck builder, roguelike. That's what it is. Um, in the game, Devil May Cry 5, uh, the character known as V has all of his moves based off of chess. Um, so, like, V standing on the back of one of his bigger, cooler summons is, I think, called Promotion. And, like, his moves are all named things like Unpassant or, like, Castling. And, like, they do as you would expect. So, like, Castling, I think, drags you to, you know, the guy that you, you want to stand next to. Well, hmm. Uh, I guess I'll move here and only take two. Not exactly what I wanted, but. So that could have been dangerous for me because I got yunked over there, but that's fine. Hmm. I'll move here and just get out of the sick. Um, anyway, I love Devil May Cry 5, and I would like to see more ideas done with that concept of, like, my character plays chess, all their moves are chess moves. That's really cool to me. The idea of, like, the whole game being structured around that, and, like, you use a, 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 I mentioned, like, you could just remake this game in 3D, but, like, that's not quite what I mean. So you have to be careful when killing these guys because they'll void they'll void grasp you. And if you hit more than one of them, um, that can kill you. Because of course it can. This is fine. And then yoinked there. And then again, like, look at the boar. Look at it. It's just it's covered. I kill you, you drag me there, I take two damage, and then I die. Yeah, good game. Um So doing this with Mystic gives you a different picture. I'll do this just to make the episode a little longer. I'll admit it. Um, it wasn't as long as the other ones. Like, the idea of playing a game and the game is chess... And, like, you're playing a different game while playing chess is really cool. Like, I would like to see more of stuff like V. Um, this is just a general Devil May Cry thing. Because in Devil May Cry, every character is... Uh, here, I guess? Well, that's lame. Um, every character is, like, themed. So, like, all of Nero's moves are named after gambling, uh, gambling stuff. Um... Mm. Got to take I gotta take damage somewhere. I guess I'll do it here. Um, all of Nero's moves are named after gambling, um, and that's fun. That's a clever thing for the character. That's cool. I like that. Let's get the moves just because that'll be a little more efficient. I think because it's the only way that I can buy two things, two full things that I both want. Yeah. Hmm. 
here, I guess. But yeah, obviously this is, I think this is only one guy developing it. Um, which is part of, part of why I'm like, not surprised, but just impressed with the level of good design on display here. Um, I think they've been getting help with this game for just developing it in other languages, just because they don't speak all of those languages. Um, but other than that, I think it's one guy developing it. Um, and of course it's cool to support indie developers. See, you can see that taking effect there. I, I got dragged in places where I didn't have the gusto to get dragged, so it, it killed me. It hurt me. Um, I'll take the L. But yeah, that's Ponbarian, and like... I'm not a huge fan of chess. I can enjoy chess. I like chess, but like... For me, chess is either a little slow and boring, or it's a thing where... I have already seen every chess game. Like, chess is not a quote-unquote solved game to some people, but like... Chess is a thing where no matter what I do... A technique invented by a Russian guy or a French guy a billion years ago will have been invented to deal with it. And then I feel like there's no point in me playing because it's like, they're not, like, there's no new, uh, there's no new thing that I could come up with. And I know that the bong cloud was only a recent invention, but like, I really don't feel like I could invent anything new for chess. Um, but this game, you know, introducing new pieces to a wider audience. Introducing it in a deck builder roguelike. Did it right. A deck builder roguelike sense. Um, and having a very action uh, uh, theme, having this cool RPG feeling is cool. And I feel like broadening the scope and making it like, yeah, it's a bigger 3D thing. Even if you made it look like an N64 game, it would still be exciting. And, like, there's so many places that this idea could go. Like, making an action game out of chess, that's cool. And I feel like now is a really good time to do it. Because, well, with, like, Critical getting super good at chess and chess being a, a highly watched game on Twitch, of all places, you know, support for chess is high, which is also part of why I feel like Pombarian is, is popping off. Because there were a lot of deck builder roguelikes coming out. And then also someone was like, what if I added chess? So yeah, Pond Baron is good. I enjoy it greatly. It's a fun game. I open it from time to time. This is, I actually have reviewed a lot of um, games in Friday Night Roguelikes where like, I'm like, yeah, this is a video game. And then I never look at it again. Um, for example, I only played off the top of my head, West of Roguing, Kingdom of Roguing. I only played that once and I did so for the episode. I never played it again. Um, I'm just looking through here. Uh, Ziggurat. Initially, I had only ever played it for the episode, and I never played it again after that. Um, those were, you know, those were just things where, like, I played it, and then I, I never even thought about it after that. But in the specific case of Ponbarian, I actually have, like, hours of this on Steam. I have... Yeah, I've played 14 hours of Ponbarian outside of the recording I, I've done of it. Um, I enjoy this game greatly. I think it's really good. And I, I'm i happy to bring it to a wider audience. I know that I don't get that many viewers, but it's very enjoyable. And it's a good time to do a game like this. Because, you know, it was a good time for the dev to release it. And I feel like it's a good time for people to watch it. Um, but I've been Alfred. That's been Friday Night Roguelikes. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had a good time. I know I did. Um, I'll see you next time. Next week will be a new game. Um, so be hyped. Uh, I'll see you then. Bye.